What about the many gods objection to Pascal's wager, where it's not just mm -hmm. a decision between Christianity and, say, right. atheism. You've also got to consider Islam. You've got to consider Hinduism. Yeah. You've got to consider all of these different versions of religions. And so it, it's not just as simple as, like, this option or this option. So how would you That's respond right, to this Cameron. objection to Pascal? And that wager? is the most important objection. And I think there are two ways of responding to that. One would be that if the alternatives um, are so uh, improbable, they can be safely ignored. For example, that Odin or Zeus might turn out to be the true God. The probability of that is so utterly negligible that these can be safely ignored and the argument will not be impaired. The other response would be, if you can use rational argument and evidence to reduce the alternatives to a tractable number, like two or three or four, then you can run the argument um, just using those alternatives. And I think that for Pascal himself, he believed that the alternatives basically came down to Christianity or naturalism. Although Pascal believed that belief in God is properly basic, he was an enormous fan of Christian evidences. And there are portions of the pensée that contain arguments for the resurrection of Jesus uh, that read like Gary Habermas or, or some other evidentialist. And so I think for Pascal, he thought that basically the choice was going to be between naturalism and Christianity. And when you compare those two, as I said in the uh, response to Kyle, then it is just so clear that the enormous benefits that will accrue as a result of Christianity being true, just outweigh any costs uh, associated with it, far more than naturalism, which has virtually no great benefit accruing to it, uh, if it's true.